Hey there folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the Iron Man movie series Iron Man Mark III action figure set by Hasbro. This action figure set is part of the Iron Man 6 inch scale line of action figures and was first released in 2008. I found this set in 2010 at a Toys R Us and I paid about $10 for this set. Taking a look at the figure here in the packaging, you can see uh, the Mark III that was used in the first Iron Man live action movie. And it does include uh, an accessory uh, with a snot missile there. And uh, the packaging is actually uh, quite nice. I always like uh, the first Iron Man uh, series uh, packaging. It, uh, it's just a really cool looking packaging. Taking a look at the back of the package here. You can see a description here of uh, Tony Stark as Iron Man. And uh, we have a description here of the Mark III armor. With a nice picture of the figure there. And uh, how to use the snot missile there. And uh, down below we have here other figures uh, from the Iron Man uh, line. We have uh, Iron Monger. Titanium Man and an Iron Monger uh, with an opening cockpit to reveal the pilot. Now we'll be right back and have this uh, Iron Man uh, out of the package. Okay, we're back and we have the Iron Man Mark III here out of the package. And before we get into the figure, let's go ahead and take a look at the accessories that come included with the Mark III. And uh, it's the launcher and the snot missile. Now uh, the launcher here is a common accessory with uh, the Iron Man series, uh, both in the Iron Man and Iron Man 2 series and uh, probably uh, any uh, ongoing series in the future. Uh, it's just Hasbro likes to use this particular uh, mold for a launcher. It's alright, uh, I, I don't have too many problems with it. Uh, you can see that this uh, launcher here is painted in a very gloss red and uh, silverish gray here on the muzzle. Now the snot missile here is a uh, semi-translucent uh, bluish gray color. And uh, there are details uh, on the uh, end here, uh, but it's very hard to see on the video screen. Uh, but uh, the snot missile uh, does uh, click into the launcher. You just push it in until it clicks. And uh, to fire the snot missile, uh, you just push on this button on top, and that will fire the missile. And it does uh, fire uh, fairly well. And uh, also the, uh, the launcher here uh, does uh, fit fairly well on the uh, upper forearm of uh, the Iron Man figure here. And it's a fairly secure fit. And it, it, like I said, I'm not too bothered by it because it's relatively small and you can see it it's not uh, overly large or anything where it becomes outrageous so but uh, it's a decent uh, if overused accessory and uh, let's go ahead and take that off and let's go ahead and take a look at the Iron Man figure here now uh, I'm a fan of the uh, movie uh, Iron Man armors uh, I really like the aesthetic uh, I think it uh, looks uh, really nice and uh, this particular armor here uh, does uh, represent the Iron Man Mark III in the first movie uh, decently. Uh, it's not uh, exactly uh, like the movie version. Um, it's a little thin, especially around the legs, um, but uh, I don't mind too much. Uh, the general overall look is there. And uh, you can see, uh, starting with the uh, head sculpt here, uh, it's a... Uh, color combination of uh, gloss red and metallic gold and uh, you can see uh, the head sculpt there and the eyes are not painted it looks like tampos on there a uh, combination of blue and white uh, with white being the highlight now the eye is a little bit scratched on the right side a fairly small scratch I'm not sure if you'll be able to notice it in the video here but there is a scratch there and it's also uh, off shifted just a bit uh, to the left uh, you can tell uh, because the sculpt of the eye uh, 
over here is uh, showing uh, but uh, not on the, this end because of the tampo over the sculpt. So you could tell it's just slightly shifted to the left, uh, to his left, and and it's not too bad. Uh, you really don't notice it until you actually really look at it real close. But other than that, it's actually uh, pretty decent. And then uh, looking at the uh, armor here, you can see more of that very glossy red. And uh, actually, there's uh, different shades of red on this uh, particular figure. It's a very, very dark red here on the upper torso. But uh, here on the arms and uh, on the legs, it's a little bit uh, brighter red. Uh, uh, subtle uh, difference in the, in the color there, but you, you can notice it, uh, especially on the uh, upper torso there. And you can also see the gold here. It's actually, uh, the gold is actually applied very well on this particular figure. I've seen some other figures where the gold uh, is a little thin and you can see some of the red underneath. Uh, this one is actually pretty decent in the application and uh, the the amount of uh, paint used. It's actually uh, pretty nice on there. Uh, taking a look at some more details on the torso here, you can see the arc reactor that's painted a very uh, bright blue or light blue. And you can see some more silver accents here on the armor. It's also down on the feet here. It's actually kind of cool. And you can see some silver here uh, at the base of the neck. And I, I wasn't sure if that was uh, applied properly. I and mean, saw some photos of the Mark III. And it, that silver does show up there. So that's uh, pretty cool. And uh, you can see this, these shoulder pads here are a separate piece. Uh, they're clipped in. Uh, many folks uh, who have this figure uh, complain about the, uh, I guess, the detachable nature of this uh, shoulder pad. It's easy to lose because it's simply clipped in through a rounded peg on here and uh, these dimples on uh, either side of the uh, shoulder there. So if you move the arm uh, at an angle where it uh, rubs against uh, the peg, and peg holes here it'll uh, detach and sometimes even fly off so you have to be careful uh, with that and uh, and it uh, some of them uh, they are uh, loose uh, when in the peg like this so what I end up doing is just pushing it up uh, beyond the uh, peg hole to, t to get a tighter grip on the shoulder here but uh, then you really have to be careful about the it popping off on moving the arm so uh, that's just one thing uh, about these uh, shoulder uh, pegs uh, or shoulder pads. Uh, they, you just got to be careful with them there. Uh, taking a look at the rest of the uh, armor here, you can see that the hands have these um, these pads here on the top or, or the back of the hand, and uh, it does get in the way of articulation, especially when you want to have him, you know, like a repulsor firing. Uh, pose uh, because it, it rubs up against the wrist so you can't lift the hand uh, entirely back. Uh, that's something maybe where uh, shaving off some of the top here or clipping some of that off to allow the hand to be more free and pushing the hand uh, backwards there. Uh, moving down to the legs here you got the color combination of uh, gold and uh, red here and uh, you can see how uh, thin uh, the legs are uh, compared to what's uh, shown in the movie. Uh, like I said, I don't mind too much. Uh, to me, I just take it as uh, a very thin, uh, rigid metal that uh, is very form-fitting. So I, d I don't mind too much. I, the the overall look of the Mark III from the movies is there, and uh, so I, I don't complain too much about the thin uh, thinner legs there. Uh, but it. You can see uh, overall detail, some the paneling here as well. Uh, throughout the uh, armor, you can see uh, some line, sculpt lines here, and especially on the back. It's very nice on the back. You can see lots of detail here, and then some more gold uh, paint application there. So, fairly good representation of a Mark III uh, from the movies. Uh, going over uh, the articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so you can go all the way around and uh, up and down. And if you uh, move it uh, to the extreme edges, uh, the head will pop off. It's not uh, too tight, uh, 
but uh, not too loose either it's just uh, easier to remove when you uh, tilt it at extreme angles or move it up and down at extreme angles there so but uh, you can get uh, generalized uh, uh, poses uh, with the uh, head there and the arms uh, do go uh, all the way around and they do go uh, out uh, you have to move uh, the clip out of the way but they do go all the way out and uh, all the way in uh, the arms do go all the way around at the bicep there are uh, double joints at the elbow so you can get some uh, incredible uh, posing there and the arm uh, the hands uh, go all the way around at the wrist and uh, are on a hinge as well so they do go down and uh, up a little bit but you can see that the pad here does uh, run into the uh, wrist so if you shave it or clip it it'll allow the hand to go back uh, the torso can go uh, up down and uh, extremely uh, down there well not too extreme and it does go all the way around and uh, so uh, pretty decent on there uh, no waist articulation so I think uh, most of the torso is uh, taken into account for that uh, the legs are on a uh, ball uh, hinged swivel joint so you, you can move uh, the leg uh, up and uh, down and uh, back uh, but you really have to move the ball joint uh, to get it into those positions and it does uh, go out to the side as well uh, the upper thigh can go all the way around the uh, knees are double uh, hinged so you can get the uh, leg uh, about that far back and that far forward and the feet are on a hinged swivel joint so the feet can go up about that much uh, down that far and uh, all the way around despite uh, the ankle guard here uh, the ankle guard made of a softer uh, material there overall it's a decent mark three uh, it could be better but uh, I uh, still do like it uh, like I said I'm a fan of the uh, movie armors and uh, I think it's actually uh, pretty neat and it's decently posable uh, but uh, it oh, it's, could be uh, leave some room for improvement, uh, but overall very nice. Uh, this is my casual peek into the Iron Man movie series Mark III Iron Man. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.